fringe middleweight contenders looking to get back up into the top flight. We have the former LFA middleweight champ all in Brennan Allen taking on Poland's Christoph Jaco. A couple of guys looking to keep it rolling and make two fight win streaks, three fight win streaks. And for one of them, they're going to lose unless we get a draw. That's a bit of a tongue twister of a brain blender. Brennan Allen, I mean, what can I say about this guy? He has had a tidy run. He debuted as a pro at 19 years old. I mean, he's what? He's 26 right now. He's a fan of the channel. So, Brennan, I'm sure you're out there. But for him, he's a 2015 IMMAF amateur world champion. You like to see that in middleweight. It's a good lineage. I mean, his what? Third pro fight? He was taking on Trevin Giles already. Like, he really did get a fast track. He fights on Dana White's Contender Series. He ends up in the UFC. And so far, out of the whole run, it's been pretty good. I mean, he loses to Sean Strickland by finish. He has that loss, uh, what, three fights ago against Chris Curtis. But he was able to pick up the pieces once more. And if you look at the five on in for Brendan Allen, it's a win over Carl Robertson by a finish. It's a win over Puna Soriano. The loss to Curtis. The win over Alvi, where knock him down, drag him out, submits him. And then a fight against Jacob Malkoon, where... Malcolm puts on his wrestling shoes because that's what he has. Bad guy to do it against. And Brendan Allen gets taken down a little bit, but he makes his strikes account for more on the feet. And we've seen different iterations out of Brendan Allen. We've seen the I'm a grappler, you're a grappler, Carl Dacus fight. We've seen the I'm Bangkok ready Brendan Allen where Look good he against Puna Heli that way. Shows up with his Muay Thai against Puna Soriano. We've seen kind of a mix of everything in between. We've also seen Allen struggle against pressure strikers in a Sean Strickland, which Christoph Jaco... Look at all of his wins and look at all of the decisions. Jaco can fight that way. And Jaco also fought Sean Strickland and lost as well. So it is a bit of a tough nut to crack in this matchup because stylistically you could get any different variation of Brendan Allen. Whereas for Christoph Jaco, I'd say you're just going to get just the kickboxer Christoph Jaco. But he outgrappled Gerald Mearshart his last time out. Who thought that would have ever happened? Not I, me. I don't think we're going to see that version against Brendan Allen. I will say that. But this is a very interesting fight. Just because Jaco is one of these strikers who is a great striker. Don't get me wrong. Technically, very, very high level. He's just not the most powerful guy on the feet. You look at what he's able to do with some of his combinations. And you would assume that when they land, they have devastating effect on his opponents. They just never really do. And it is an odd thing to see from a guy who does throw a lot of volume. Who does throw a lot of crazy, like, hook kicks, axe kicks, stuff like that. Christoph Jaco has pretty much every kind of kick in his repertoire. It's just not like a Luke Rockhold. When they land, you don't hear a crazy thud that sounds like two wooden baseball bats are hitting each other. But that's the weird thing about Jaco. He's just very good defensively in most aspects of MMA. And that's why it's very difficult to go out there and beat a guy like him on decision. Because you're going to have to expect to... Okay, you're going to absorb 150 strikes. He's going to be moving around all over the place because he does have good footwork. The thing is, though, when Jaco does get put into some very specific situations, he does struggle with them. For instance, the great footwork can be diminished if you get him up against the cage. He somehow will kind of jump left to right and be less of a traditional fighter when he has his own back up against the cage. And that's where we've seen him eat some very damaging shots from guys who aren't even all that heavy-handed themselves. I always go back to the Brad Tavares fight. Shaco's fighting very well. He's doing a good job with his volume. But when Tavares is able to get him up against the cage and eliminate some of that good footwork from Shaco, it does make him a lot more hittable in that range. But for Jaco, like you had mentioned, the new wrestling wrinkle to his game might be one that we do see a lot more often. Maybe that is his answer too. You're a power puncher. You're finding a way to get on the inside of my range. Well, what's my answer now? I can't really get you off with my hand speed or my power. I can duck underneath, go for the takedown, and that will at least switch it up in my opponent's mind. I just don't know if Jaco is going to have that opportunity against a guy like Brennan Allen, who might be susceptible to the takedown, don't get me wrong. But when you do end up grappling with him for some of these longer engagements, that's when Brennan Allen can really shine. I even go back to the Kevin Holland fight where he gets hurt early. Shout out to Kevin Holland. Don't know if he did retire or not, but maybe he no, did. No, he didn't. It sat, well, he put it on his Instagram, I'm almost 30. Thanks for the cheese. It's over. But Allen gets hurt by Kevin Holland. He's in very bad shape early in that fight. And what's he able to do? Holland gets his back. Is Looks like he's going to win by submission. Brent Allen fights out of that situation and then is able to get the rear naked choke on a guy like Kevin Holland. I just think Allen is a lot more devastating when it comes to his grappling in this matchup. And that's why I do expect Shaco to go back to a more of a volume striking uh, game plan. Yeah, and I think Mearshart's a much more devastating grappler than Christoph Shaco, But that doesn't take away the fact that Shaco was able to take the fight to the mat, control large portions we, of that fight and get the win. We have seen seen Gerald Mearshart be controlled on the mat. Yes, he can get a lot of submission wins. He's a phenomenal defensive grappler. 
But, like, even Dustin Stoichfuss was able to hold him down for moments in their fight before he was able to get that submission win. The weird part about it, though, for Jocko, late career, kickboxer, decision fighter, I think there's one guy that he trains with that really, really helps him out, especially for a matchup like this. He has Thiago Alves. You're going to work some of the striking. He has Rafael Carvalho, the former Bellator middleweight champ. He is Johnny Eblen, the current Bellator middleweight champ. What does Johnny do? Johnny wrestles and grounds guys out. That's a perfect guy to replicate Brennan Allen in a matchup like this and for Brennan Allen we've seen different iterations he's trained in Colorado he's trained all over the place he's out of Louisiana originally Killcliffe FC we've seen a little bit more of an evolution with his hands with his striking more kicks. he definitely is a devastating striker and when you look at it we threw this one out there to the YouTube community tab because we were away for a week and we needed some stuff to do so middleweight scrap UFC Vegas 61 who gets it done this one was not a poll this one was you guys talk about it MPTV, Craig and Matt, I was wondering if you guys are safe. Best regards to you and your families. We good. New Brunswick, for the most part, was good. In the East, though, Point de Chain and Chediac didn't fare so well, so hopefully the communities over there are doing well. Hopefully all that are in Cape Breton, especially Sydney area, as well as Port of Basque and Newfoundland, hopefully everybody's safe and sound there because Hurricane Fiona was devastating. So MPTV... That's appreciated. Hopefully, everybody in Atlanta, Canada is doing well. Dan Goldstein, Jaco via vicious, devastating, brutal point fighting for three rounds. Be up there with Usman's toe stomps for pure violence and excitement. Chad, the UFC dad, feel it win for either is a great step for a title run in a shallow division. You'll say Alan Bill, who's always out there in the comments saying Jaco lost three in a row and looked like he was out of the UFC and now he's four and won his last five. And I stopped losing money picking against them. Allen's on a similar run, but the level of competition is much lower. And Love Jesus is saying Allen is a... Fuck. I'm shocked he's the underdog. Jaco has a puncher's chance only. Matt, this is a really tight fight. The odds in this one, Allen opened to minus 125. They're at par now. Jaco opened uh, plus 105. Uh, you know, we're talking odds being at par. We have a look at the top all you vote. Surprise us there to you. Fan favorite is the 7-2 UFC fighter, Brendan Allen. I'm going to say the fans probably have him 65% over under Allen. I think it'll be under. I think it's going to be under. Well, it is under. 744 total votes, 61% Allen, 75% by decision. For the 39% that have Jocko, 85% by decision. Who do you think gets it done here? It's a really weird fight because Jocko is going to look good until he doesn't. And if this fight does end inside the distance, without a doubt, Brendan Allen's going to be the one getting the finish victory. He has shown an evolution with his striking on the feet, but this has been my issue with Brendan Allen, especially within this run of his career. He is a very high-level fighter. I don't think anyone would disagree with me with that. But he never fights the way you think he's going to fight. Every time I think he's going to go in there, put on the wrestling shoes, show us the really dominant grappling that he has been able to show us in the past that's when he goes out there flicking the jab looking for the body kick and yes his striking has come a long ways from the fighter that we first saw in the UFC but I still prefer the grapple heavy version of Brendan Allen even though I like that he's been able to work on those skills and develop those skills I still think of Allen's best uh, path to victory as a grappler and less of a striker and I just like the striking to help him bridge the gap between those two areas I think Allen can get the offensive takedown on Christophe Jaco, though. That's the one thing about this fight that I think is going to be difficult for Jaco. I think he's going to be able to get a lot of good volume numbers up when they are in the middle of the cage. But I think at a certain point, whether it's one minute left, three minutes left in the in the round, at some point, Allen probably is going to get those hands clasped behind Jaco. And it really will just become a case of, can Allen get enough work done with however much time he has left on the mat to make up the difference that Jaco was able to get uh, in the middle of the cage? Again, it's a tough fight. The odds reflect that because it is uh, even odds. Ever so slightly, I'm going to favor Christoph Jaco in this matchup. I, I came into this really thinking that I was going to predict Brennan Allen, but I do like the overall footwork of Jaco. I think it's going to be difficult for Allen to, like I said, get a lot of those volume numbers up before he is able to get one of those takedowns and do some work on the mat. And for that reason, I do think Jaco, and you hate to uh, pick a fight this way, but like our commenter said, death by a thousand cuts basically is how Christoph Jaco likes to fight. I do expect him to use a lot of that volume, and I think it's takedown defense will be good enough to defend the takedowns early in the rounds because I think that's really what it comes down to. If Jaco gets taken down with four minutes left in a round, he's going to lose that round and probably get diced up on the mat. If he can prevent the takedowns until the last minute or so, I think he can be sound enough defensively to at least not lose the round based on Look that. at Jaco's last two fights. 
It's very bizarro. Misha Serkinov takes him down five times. Serkinov, all he did was grapple, and Jaco wins the fight because he struck a little bit. Like, it was a close fight. Not a good one. Here nor there, not a great one. Then he fights Gerald Mearshart, and he's the grappler. And for Jaco, career-wise in the UFC, and he's been around for a very long time, 83% takedown defense, training with Alves and Johnny Eblen. Like, that's a really good power Is combo. he the Alex Caceres of the division? Yeah, he's been yeah. around for a while. He's well-rounded. He can offer anybody a tough fight. No, but in the grand scheme no. of things, you don't think Jaco's going to break through. Uh, Caceres went on that big win streak, and there were guys like Austin Springer peppered in there. For Jaco, the win streak has guys that you know and love, like Marc-Andre Berrio and Gerald yeah, Mearsher. Like, they're Misha borderline Sarkinoff. ranked fighters. You just don't really expect them to break through. I guess. But when I do look at this one, for Brendan Allen, you talk about it. Never knowing what a game plan is, sticking to a game plan, and when the wheels fall off, Boy, do they fall off. Wins or losses for Brendan Allen, it can get a little bit squirrely. I like him for the finishing ability, so I'll take him here because I think he's a little bit more well-rounded. But for Jaco, again, if he wins, decision. If Allen wins, maybe you could see a decision, but I do like the grappling handles out of Allen in a matchup like this, where it could be close. I think it will be. Again, for me, it just comes down to how early can Brennan Allen get the takedown in every round. If he has three minutes to work on the clock, I do expect him to be able to get a lot of that ground and pound off and make Jaco a lesser version of himself as the fight continues. But again, if there's only 45 seconds left in the round and Allen is able to get on top, I still think that's going to be enough time for him to really be able to make a difference with some of the striking Jaco is able to do, but a very closely contested fight. Matt going with Poland's Christoph Jaco. I'm all in on Allen. We have a big time fight in the middleweight division this weekend. Let us know and pepper us some more with those comments down below. Who do you have in this matchup? In the main event, we have Mackenzie Dern taking on Yan Zhao Nan. Coming up near the top of the strawweight division, you're going to want to keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks. We always say, let's get into 